Battlefield and Call of Duty, two of the biggest video game franchises of all time, both of which have been mightily struggling over the last few years. Battlefield 2042 was one of the most anticipated games of the past decade, but the sales and player counts wouldn't indicate that. The game had one of the most abysmal launches in recent memory. And as for Call of Duty, they've been on a hit or miss cycle year after year for as long as I can remember. And with the most recent Call of Duty, Vanguard, being widely considered the worst Call of Duty of all time, it has led people to wonder if they'll ever see Call of Duty return to its glory days. Today I want to take a look at these two iconic gaming juggernauts and see who has a higher chance of redemption as well as who is in more trouble going into the future. Alright, that's enough of the professional shit. Time to give my honest and candid opinions about these two. Let's start off with Battlefield. So Battlefield, in my opinion, took a turn for the worse in 2017-2018 with the release and announcement of Battlefield 5. So Battlefield 5 as a game was pretty good. I would say it was like an average Battlefield. I don't think it's one of the best in the series. I don't think it's one of the worst. It's just somewhere in between. But it had so much negative publicity surrounding it, with just with the whole female characters being in the game. Obviously, it's a World War II game. Is it World War One or World War II? It's World War II. What the hell am I talking about? It's a World War II game. Obviously, there was no, you know, there's a lot of angry people on Twitter and stuff. Honestly, I didn't really care that they added women. I know it's not historically correct, but I didn't have that much of a problem with it as opposed to some other people did. Uh, it seems like a lot of people just get upset about everything. I guess it's the fact that they're kind of saying that it's a historically... I don't know if they're trying to be historically correct with these games, but if they did claim that, then I could see why people would be angry about it. But yeah, that was like a huge, just negative connotation surrounding this game. And I don't think Battlefield 5 necessarily sold poorly. I think it has around 7 million copies sold worldwide, which is decent, but comparatively speaking to the past Battlefield games, Battlefield 3 has around 17 million copies sold worldwide. Battlefield 4 sold pretty well. Battlefield 1 sold well. And then, like I said, Battlefield 5 took a turn for the worse and the franchise just hasn't been able to recover. Everybody thought it would recover with 2042. This is one of the most anticipated games. I know I said in the intro probably of the last five years or 10 years, but honestly, thinking about it more, this might be one of the most anticipated and hyped games of all time. Like, it literally was that. Everybody was talking about this game. We saw the initial launch trailers and the gameplay. It looked phenomenal. And then when it came out, it was just completely not what we expected. So, Battlefield 2042, I could rant for days on end about that game. I've already done it <laughs> too many times to count, so I'm just not gonna get into it. But we know the problems it was experiencing at launch. Last month, actually, this game dipped below 1,000 players on Steam. So that is unheard of. This game just came out five months ago and to dip below 1,000 players is just not a good sign, of course. Uh, I think it's actually raised the player count to 2,000. So woo! Woo! 2,000 players, which isn't something to be celebrating about, but at this point, I guess they'll just take what they can get. So with the patches and, and updates that they're releasing, that's one thing I'll give them, I guess, is they're continuing to uh, try to fix the game but you cannot recover when you release a broken game nowadays. Like people just don't have the attention span. They'll move on and go play other games. You can, if somebody buys this game and it's not working properly, they'll probably give it like a week or two, maybe even a month. And then, you know, see ya, they're gone. They're going to play something else. They're not gonna wait for you to fix the game. They're gonna try to get a refund or sell the game or do whatever they can. And yeah, that's why these games have to work day one, or at least in the first week, you have to have a working product or people are just gonna move on. So let's move on to the most important question. Do I think Battlefield as a franchise can recover going forward in the future? It's honestly a big question mark. I just don't know at this point because supposedly they're already working on the next Battlefield game, which isn't a great sign. Honestly, when I heard that news, I was like, what, are you kidding me? The current game is broken as hell and you guys wanna go work on a new game? Doesn't make any sense, but yeah, I think they have one more chance. I think EA and DICE, if anybody watches my video, which I know you're not going to, I average like 100 views per video, but you get what I mean. Anybody over there is watching this, first of all, hire me and I'll fix your game, I'll fix your entire series. Second of all, what in the shit are you guys doing over there? Third, you guys have one more opportunity. I think if you guys release another Battlefield game, I think half, First of all, I think it's gonna sell poorly at first, at first, because I think people are gonna be hesitant as they should be with the release of 2042, but you cannot release another broken game. Just whatever you guys do, make sure that game is not broken. It cannot be broken when it comes out. It has to be working, has to be functional, and it has to be good more importantly. So 
Honestly, I, I hope it's like a Bad Company 3. I've been asking for another Bad Company game for years and years and years. We haven't seen one for what, like 12, 13 years now? So please make it Battlefield Bad Company 3. I think a lot of diehard Battlefield fans want to see another Bad Company game. Maybe it'll, you know, people are so mad at you guys. Maybe it'll actually uh, warm their hearts if you guys announce a Battlefield Bad Company 3 and bring some people back that were hating on the franchise. But... Yeah, for Battlefield, it is not currently looking good right now, but uh, maybe, maybe they have a chance to recover in the future. And then we move to Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty is the more interesting one, in my opinion, because it is not dying as a franchise, because Call of Duty Warzone is literally holding this entire series up by the edge of its tiny dick, okay? So, Warzone is the thing that Call of Duty cares about, Activision, I should say, cares about. They don't really care about the multiplayer anymore, at least from what I understand and what I see online. It doesn't seem like they do... I would say ever since Warzone came out in 2020, they just haven't cared about the, the base multiplayer as much as they used to. I think Modern Warfare showed that. I think Cold War showed that. Treyarch's a little bit better with the community and listening and doing updates. They give us tons of content, tons of updates. I mean, hell, they're still updating the game a year and a half after it came out. So Treyarch's a little bit of an anomaly when it comes to that, but... Vanguard definitely shows that they just care more about Warzone. I mean, Warzone's bringing in all the money. Uh, Activision, as we know, is one of the biggest cash cows in the world, let alone the video game industry. So, yeah, Call of Duty is a tricky one, like I said, because I think Warzone is going to hold this franchise up for years and years and years. Like, I think Warzone won't die. They've already, they've already announced Warzone 2. When that comes out, it's going to be popular as ever. Everybody plays Warzone and, and Call of Duty. For that so I don't think it's on the verge of dying but the base multiplayer itself and the base game that's been dying for years I think and and Vanguard showed that like the first week or I think it was the first month I read had the worst sales for a Call of Duty game in over 14 years and that game I'm gonna, it's much like for 2042 I'm not gonna get into it because I could rant about it for days and days and days and days but and Vanguard shows that the base multiplayer is struggling right now. I mean, the game's been out for five months. It's already been on sale at least six or seven times. They're forcing it down our throat, trying to choke us with it. They were just trying to do whatever they can to make us play this piece of shit. And it's not going to happen for most of us. But yeah, and even when you go on Vanguard, like the last time I was on it was about a week ago for a video. I'm not playing that shit otherwise, but uh, I had to make a video and I was jumping in matches and some of the lobbies, a lot of the lobbies actually were empty or like half empty, which you never see with a newer Call of Duty, like the latest Call of Duty and you're getting in half empty lobbies. Yikes, 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 yikes. So yeah, Call of Duty going forward, I am more optimistic about Call of Duty than I am Battlefield. And here's the reason why. Last... Was it last year or earlier this year? Microsoft, of course, bought Activision out. And that deal is going to go through in early 2023. And once that goes through, I have the utmost hope. And um, I just think that Microsoft's going to do a great job with the franchise. I think that a lot of these games are going to go into Game Pass. The player counts on the older Call of Duties are going to go up. And I think even with the newer titles, I think they already announced that next year there's not going to be a Call of Duty game. So they're going to give these developers more chance and more time to work on the games, which is going to lead to a better product. And I just think Microsoft's going to do overall a way better job of handling these games and the releases and getting the, to the fans what they want. So, but then again, I think about Halo and then I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, Microsoft obviously owns 343. And we all see, we all saw what uh, Halo Infinite turned out to be. So, yeah, I want to know from you guys down in the comment section which game franchise do you think has the better chance of turning it around? Leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.